Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I would like to present the Nick Capable. It is a combination of the more successful ideas from both of our attempts at reaching orbit and in particular the top stage is from the Nick 6 and so it is just an explorer core with a spin stabilized upper stage here. But as you can see, so uh, these are the tilted rockets. Now these guys have a little bit less fuel uh, because we don't need them counter spinning and uh, eliminating the spin of the previous stage because the previous stage in this case is not going to spin. It is actually going to be controlled by this Able Delta Avionics package and we, it has the, the nitrous oxide and those thrusters. I might eventually want to up the size of the nitrous oxide since it will also be pointing the upper stage in the proper direction, but I think this is enough. And so we have that going for us, and then it's the Vanguard and the RD-103 at the bottom here. You'll note uh, no boosters, right, because the upper stage is now lighter than previously. It doesn't have to carry the Able Delta anymore. It used to be on the Capable that we had the Able Delta on top, and it would be continuously guided. Instead, we are going to have spin stabilization on the final stage. I credit uh, uh, Nathan Kell for reminding me that maybe having two spin stabilized upper stages was not such a good idea. And so that is why I came up with this idea. I think it's contrary to his intentions when mentioning that, but uh, uh, we will see. You'll note uh, an impressive 11,000 meters per second of delta V. So this should be able to get into orbit with substantial margin. And it is also cheaper than the Capable. It's more expensive than the Nick, but it's cheaper than the Capable. And with a little bit more juice here and there, uh, it's possible that it could be even sent over to the moon. Um, and we could uh, squeeze some more juice on it because the upper stage is only one minute. If we take a look at the intended time for the XASR, uh, we see that it is supposed to be able to burn for 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Uh, so, And of course the thrust weight ratio there is quite high. So there are possibilities here and especially if we add back on some boosters on the bottom. So there are development possibilities to uh, get to the moon. We are talking about uh, let's say just be safe 13,000 meters per second. And we're talking about a flyby not uh, anything else. Just a flyby of the moon. Um, that will be difficult. I, I'm not fancying using this really, but it's an idea. Uh, so, ambitious. I am uh, going ambitious this time, and we will see if this works out. Let's just get on with it. I'm, I'm really eager to see whether this is finally going to take care of that, that contract. And this should be able to launch some, some satellite abilities as well. Once we get those solar panels that we've already got cooking, we're re researching the technology for that. And so a communication satellite could be launched with this if it looks like it's going to work out for us. Especially since we're probably going to have a low periapsis but a high apoapsis. That's not too bad for communications. Okay, I think that's all I have to say about it. I wonder if there's anything else I wanted to fix. Probably not. Uh, it's possible that I want to actually shorten the base stage to a minute 30 or less because it's only got a sea level thrust weight ratio of 1.19. We'll see how it works out first and then I'll make the adjustments after. Okay, so I'm gonna save. Uh, actually, let me just separate out when those fairings go off. Alright, now I'll save and we will build just one for now because I might want to make some changes since this is somewhat of a new configuration it looks awkward I know with the tiny little thing on top but it's not the most photogenic rocket ever but uh, we're looking for something that'll work why is it 23 days now oh uh, yeah why is it 23 days now I thought it was like 13 days just a moment ago okay anyway let's go out so I want to actually complete the Nick Capable first and okay 16 days well that makes sense let us try it out uh, our technology is uh, well basic solids in 75 days then stability and early probes in 217 and improved instrumentation I, I honestly I guess this is the one with the solar panels in two years kind of thing we've got upgrade points hmm oh our uh, scientific development is actually quite Oh, that's per year. 
Oh, uh, something changed it. Uh, I changed it from per day to per year. Not too sure I like the per year idea. Hmm. Um, maybe we should upgrade the SPH since I. But then again, the aircraft. I don't know. Maybe we should get into aircraft development and having a really really low build time for the SPH is not going to be good. Yeah, let's. By the way, this is point one. So I mean, could we make the second rate? We can't make it higher than the first rate, I suppose. Okay. Well. Yeah. We'll get started on upgrading the SPH so that we can do quicker rock. Yeah, quicker quicker planes with it. All right. Okay. Uh. Well, it's on the launch pad. Nick capable one, and we will see how it works out. Probably want to aim high through the initial stages until uh, we get to the the XASRs. We got two XASR stages again. All right. Well, here we go. And it's on its way. Not a lot of noise this time, just the uh, one RD 103. Well, of course, another benefit of this rocket is the fact that we don't, we aren't using the boosters means that it's obviously cheaper because we're not using those engines, but we don't have to worry about the AJ-10 failure issue. Okay, that off, SAS, RCS. Okay, I don't think I need an RCS, but... Uh-oh, that's wrong. Ah, uh... Yeah, that's not how that's supposed to work at all. Okay, staging error. Uh, yeah. Just gotta abandon this back to Space Center. In my over-eagerness, I allowed a staging mistake to occur. And the reason was actually because uh, these are the structural fairings. Uh, they are, um, what you call it, yeah, the, these guys over here. And these fuselage fairings, which don't show up as fairings on this. And, uh, so um, I thought these were actually the fairings on this stage, when in fact they don't show up there. These are actually the fairings up here, and so I should drag those there. And those are actually the fairings uh, from here. These are the conic fairings in the aerodynamic section. That's because it is more of an aerodynamic bit here. This is more of a fuselage bit. So that was the logic, but uh, that bit me right there. So, well, anyway, let's save this and try again. I am undaunted. I confess to being a little bit confused about why this Nick Capable takes 23 days to finish when the previous one took 16. Maybe I had some spare parts left over somehow, possibly. Maybe that's the thing. Don't know. I should really scrap this uh, Nick 6 actually. I don't think the Nick 6 is the way to go anymore. Okay, uh, let's see, if I scrap it? Yeah. Well, that doesn't help that one. Would it help another one? Well, it only says 21 days. I scrapped the whole Nick 6 and, um... Wait, the only part inventory item is a real shoot radio shoot? Where do we even have a radio shoot on this? I don't have... I'm not using one. Oh wait, uh, it's got... Oh, okay, so it's got the... It's like this. Engines... Alright. New fuel tank, separation motors, air bees. Okay, so we can put these to use apparently, but it's still only down to 21 days. I, I don't get it. I don't get how the first one was 16 days and now our build time is up to 21 days. I'm sure I'm just missing something, but uh, yeah, let's let's build another one. And that's because we've got two build slots to use anyway. Okay, it is morning on November 25th, 1953, and we are going to try this again. Alright, let's hope I didn't make any other silly mistakes. Up it goes. Okay. 
Okay, 20 seconds left in the stage. 13 kilometers in altitude right now. Just gonna have it hold there. Okay, and the Vanguard is lit. It's really all about trajectory. As far as I know, all the stages should work out. We've tested them before. So, it's really about whether I can get a good trajectory. This time, with the final stage, we will burn at zero pitch at uh, close to apoapsis. That is the plan. I think our initial trajectory was too steep. Judging from how this Vanguard stage is working, I overdid it a bit. I'm just basically trying to keep the time to apoapsis restrained. Now the next stage is guided, so we don't have problems there. We will need to use the RCS, the nitrous oxide. gonna do that set and ignition okay there's those XASRs we'll definitely be past 150 kilometers on this side Now the final stage is just a minute, so time to apoapsis, about 30 seconds will do the trick. Now let's separate the fairing. Okay, we are now at zero pitch. Let's see how the spin-up works, and that'll be it. Okay, set, ignition. Okay, it's spinning. And it's a little bit too wobbly, it's pointed a little bit low, but the timing is good. Still going up. We'll reach our peak about halfway through the stage, a little bit sooner than halfway through the stage, but not in delta V terms, in time terms, so that's a little bit off. Should have been in delta V terms, so probably uh, we should have been 40 seconds ahead. This is wobbling a little bit more than I thought it would, but that should not prevent us from making orbit. weird camera issues. It crossed that line. Just wait for it to burn out and see if it acknowledges it. Serious g-forces right at the end there. Okay. Um, Alright. Uh, well, it's not situation orbit periapsis above 150 kilometers it's not reading those but let's let's try and uh, send some data maybe that'll help no maybe I have to do new data Periapsis above 150 kilometers, right? While low in space. Okay, let me just verify. Uh, in space, just above Earth's water should be low in space, and in fact, it's checkmarked that already. It would make for a reasonable communication satellite, I think. The spinning bit might have to be corrected later on, but... I'm worried about the contract not being fulfilled. 
I should have action grouped the one here. I action grouped the probe part in on the capable, but not on this one. Didn't say anything about it having to be steady. Did it? No. Oh, we've got uh, Geiger counter from space above Earth's tropics. That's new. Okay, let's transmit that. Still didn't help uh, satisfying this contract. Uh, well, folks, I think we've done it. And so I'm probably not... I, I'd normally just uh, wait for a ruling from the comments. But I think you'll agree that probably I should just tell this contract that is in fact fulfilled. So Alt F12. I didn't want aerodynamics overlaid. I accidentally didn't push Alt properly. Um, I don't usually do this. Where is it? Uh, contracts. Okay. Active. It's not even showing... Oh wait. Archive? No? Offered? It's not showing this contract. Actually, it isn't showing a lot of the contracts. It's only showing these first two. Uncrewed speed record isn't shown, and this first artificial satellite isn't shown. Lunar flyby, lunar orbit, lunar impactor, and successful reentry are shown as offered. I want to... Okay. Okay, so it doesn't look like I have to say complete on anything. Let, let me go back to the mission control and see what the situation is. Well, we've gotten funds. We certainly have more funds than we had before. I, th I thought we had like 130, 540,000. Archives. First flight. First artificial satellite. Uh, I think, and the funds we got match about what it says for completion. So yeah, it's completed. All right, I don't know why I wasn't showing it properly over there, but all right. And that's why we only have these two active. Okay, no crisis. Lunar flyby. Oh boy. Altitude below 5,000 kilometers. Well, we're gonna have to try this. We might just unlock the new engines and just try it properly. We've only got 331 days, so that's something I have to watch out for. Yep. Lunar orbit's even worse. I should definitely uh, build the rocket first, complete it, and then take the contract. Because otherwise I'm probably going to run out of time. Right now, pass the Carmen line crude. Seems like the next thing to do, huh? Our test was successful, but once you put a Kerbal in, gets to be a little bit wackier. Oh, uh, they want this successful re-entry unmanned. Oh, but it wants it from orbital velocity. Oh. Hmm. This return home always bothers me, because I don't know about home, especially since just offshore from Cape Canaveral is read as 3,000 kilometers away. Break the sound barrier. Okay, yeah, that's more like it. You know what? Uh, we will try. We will try the our little um, lofty, and but we won't uh, send the Kerbal into space yet. We're going to go to supersonic speed first and test it like that. Nah. No, let's just do both at the same time. All right, we're going to risk it. Uh, but I have to remember to uh, fix the parachutes and do stuff in the VAB before launching it. This could be bad, but alright, we've done testing. We won't be aiming for beyond, uh, the too far beyond the Carmen line. We, we won't be going to 200 kilometers with this, so it'll be a little bit safer, I hope. But let's get those parachutes properly configured. So they are main chutes, but in particular I wanted to make sure it's pressure pre-deployment at point three atmospheres. Apply settings, apply to all symmetry counterparts. Okay, so when I click uh, this one, all right. All right, let's hope that's all, all good and safe. 
Now, goo containers we technically don't need this time, but since I don't want to make any changes that might jeopardize anything, I'm going to keep them on. Yep, everything else will be exactly the same to, uh, to minimize the possibility of error. Okay, and those are staging as desired. Okie dokie. Got the lights on these. Wonder what added those. Okay. Yep, it's gonna be quite a flight for whichever Kerbal we decide to send up. I think that by tradition it will be Jebediah. So I will send Jebediah up and Jebediah will have the risk and the fame. We'll see. It seems like my build times have increased somehow. Alright, I'm gonna save the Lofty 2 and build 1. I'm also going to, let me see what I can do with the Nick Capable and how big we can get the upper stage, how much Delta V we can do, I don't know. It looks like the answer is not much. I've increased the upper stage to 2 minutes and 5 seconds and its thrust weight ratio is moderate now. Uh, and while that gives the upper stage 4,600 meters per second, it steals it from the lower stages which are all more efficient. Well, I mean, not all more efficient. This this stage is about the same. So, yeah, in the end, it doesn't increase our Delta V much. We'll probably have to use boosters if we really want this one to get to the moon. Probably we'll unlock other engines instead. Uh, though this is still probably pretty good to launch satellites, given that orbit that we saw it get into, and hopefully uh, the you know solar panels and additional antennae will not have too much mass to them. Uh, as far as antennae go, I'm just looking at using these reflectrons, 100 kilometer range, or these, actually these communitrons are better. So 0 0.003, so 3 kilograms, and that's on top of an 8.3 kilogram probe. So maybe just two of the antennae, and then we'll have to see how much the solar panels weigh. Okay, but uh, yeah, so this isn't as expandable as I would have hoped. Anyway, the thing to do now is the lofty. So I'm, I don't know, can I pause? I don't want to rush build, I just, well, let's just move the lofty up. So technology wise, we have, we still have some time before the next technology and I don't want to have that out. So 25 days, actually this Nick Capable will be ready but we'll just hold it in reserve. We'll probably end up editing it with the solar panels and antennae later. Okay so here we are December 20th 1953 and we're rolling out the lofty. Yep Jebediah Kerman. Well let's let's launch. Okay here he is Jebediah Kerman on the launch pad ready to go in the lofty 2. SAS is on, throttle is up. We'll have a smart ASS, but it's not going to do too much, really. Okay. I really wish the abort sequences uh, could have a delay between different activities that we could configure, but oh well. Anyway, Jebediah looks ready to go. We don't need surface info. Everything's quite tense. Mission control is all quiet and ignition and launch okay the rocket is on its way up plenty of acceleration and it over to smart ASS now well gotta admit you'd have to be pretty gutsy to be flying in this sort of thing so Jeb will be both Chuck Yeager and Alan Shepard, our first to break the sound barrier, as well as our first to reach space. Got that wiggle that we had before, but we've decided that that's nominal. So he's past the sound barrier. Yep, cruise speed record of 350 meters per second confirmed, and altitude record as well. 
Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be breaking quite a few altitude records all at the same time, and I don't know if we're going to get credit for that. We already got the next alt uh, altitude record and speed record, so that's good. Alright, I don't know how fast those will be popping up, though. Just going to go to pitch of 85. We've got the heating on the nose again. We've seen that before. It looks like the indicator on the nose is gone. Past 30 kilometers now. Apoapsis is above 100 kilometers. You gotta make sure he does get into space space rather than just the common line. Okay, that's good enough. 160 kilometers. And we'll lose some of that because we're still heading through the atmosphere. I'm gonna keep the rocket attached until we get to the thinner part of the atmosphere. Okay, I think we are good for separation. I'm going to activate the RCS. I'm going to take off Smart ESS, activate SAS, RCS system, and set. Okay, and thrusting forward with the RCS system to bring us away from the rest of the vehicle. Okay. Do we need to do a goo container here? Not really. Let's take a look at what we've completed. We've got crude altitude record of 100 kilometers. Speed record, altitude record, that altitude record, more and more of these. 1200 meters per second. But, I, well, let me clear up all the rest. Not seeing the one that I was aiming for. The Carmen line. Pass the Carmen line. Oh, and return to Earth. Right, we have to get back. So that's why it's not concluded. Okay, very good. Well, while we're in space here, how about a crew report? Uh, and we'll keep data because, well, heck, we definitely want him to get back. I think, uh, let's see, analyze telemetry on this one. Ah, good. Above Earth's shores. Maybe that's a different thing. Um, how about goo container? What do you think about Earth's shores? Was that one we did before? Yeah. Oh, it's not biome dependent. At least not surface biome dependent. Well, I'm going to eventually put it on Smart ASS and SVL negative. I want to make sure that this is all safe here. We're going down pretty fast now. Okay, SVL negative. Just gonna probably rock around a bit. Nitrous oxide thrusters aren't the most powerful things ever. I must not have chatterer in this. I, for, you know, I guess I forgot to add that in. Otherwise we'd be getting Jeb chatter right now. We're only about 250 meters away from the rest of, this, of the rocket. Okay, I'm going to wait till my velocity is at least as much delta V as I've got left. And then I'm going to ignite the retro rockets. Okay, Retro 1, Retro 2, and Ignition. Oh, shit. Okay, lucky me, that didn't totally fail. I didn't have the throttle up. Okay, I'm gonna arm both chutes. So yeah, 
yeah, remember kids, do throttle up before you ignite your engines in realism overhaul. help it out to point back at the vector it seems to be having a little bit of trouble here well we got done with the retro rockets a little bit early I think well that doesn't cause any problems nitrous oxide is being consumed at a prodigious rate this thing does seem to want to tilt over a bit I'm trying to work hard to get back to the retrograde vector as well Okay, hopefully it can hold it there. 55 kilometers, descending at, uh, well, within the nominal rate. 50 kilometers. Now 1,000 meters per second, 45 kilometers. Forty still accelerating. Thirty five still accelerating. Oh, unbalanced. Uh oh. Come on. Thirty decelerating now. G force is building up. It's trying to flip over. Despite the lead that we've got in there. Got some heating, some G forces, 20 kilometers. Don't know why it's unbalanced like this. Try my best to get back to the retrograde vector. 15 kilometers. This is certainly not nominal right now. Should hope we slow down enough before the parachutes deploy. It's trying to tip over as you can see. Try my best to force it back but that's not working because we don't have a nitrous oxide that's why. I've lost all my nitrous oxide but now the parachutes have it and looks like they're good. Alright so we needed more nitrous oxide we ran out. That was dangerous. Okay, slowing down. Jeb looks happy. A little bit in the dark there. Five kilometers, still descending 63 meters per second. Nine minutes into the flight. I think uh, Jeb will have managed it quicker than Alan Shepard. Whether that's a positive or a negative, I'll leave it up to you. Don't think there's anything we can do with the goo containers. That we have. Oh, no, uh, biological sample while flying at Earth. Keep data. So, we got one goo container. Let's review telemetry. Maybe we can uh, do some more telemetry then. I uh, mean, let's transmit this one. If it actually gets transmitted before we make it to the surface. Okay, and then analyze telemetry. Ah, oh, we did get extra. Flying over Earth's waters. I'll keep that. Okay, one kilometer. Awaiting full parachute deployment. Very critical, of course. 50 meters per second is no way to splash down. Okay, that's the sound for full deployment. And we are down to about 2.5 meters per second. Less than I thought. Yep, at this velocity, I think Jeb will end his flight a lot closer to Alan Shepard's time than I was previously thinking. And incidentally, with uh, Alan Shepard as well, the a lot of the time was spent just on the parachutes. I mean, forget the exact time of uh, his flight, but quite a chunk of that was just 
floating down on the parachutes. Okay, 100 meters. And now the question is whether I can recover this while it's trying to flop around in the water. That's not a given. I'll probably have to be quick about it. I don't want to head to Space Center accidentally, just in case. That did work for the previous probe, but I don't want to risk it with Jeb. Okay, uh, no, it's not letting me. Re no. It's got flop. Okay, can it uh, get stable so I can recover this thing? Or is it just got eternally flop? Come on, try your best. Not even seeing anything but the space center one. Uh, it's too fast for me. Maybe if I turn on SAS. Okay, well, Smart ASS is going to interfere. How about that? Shouldn't make any difference. It doesn't have a reaction wheel. Okay, I got recover vessel. Yay! Okay, so there you go, folks. Things have been accomplished. We have uh, we have successfully put something into orbit. I didn't even need to Alt F12 that one actually, and so it actually properly did it. And uh, Lofty two was successful. Jeb has made his first flight. We recovered it. I don't know about this whole distance from the KSC thing, but uh, yep. And crew Jeb got one experience point. Our reputation is close to 700. We've got 20 science to work with, but uh, we've got a lot of stuff already researching here. Our basic solids will uh, be done in nine days, so we can look forward to that. And maybe that is the key with uh, procedural SRBs. I think that those were included in that uh, to launching for the moon. All right, so we'll look forward to that in the next episode. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.